the world. Subscribe now to the Hot 97 YouTube channel. It's Ebro in the Morning with Laura Stiles and Rosenberg. Ebro Laura Rosenberg, uh, we're getting ready for the Survivor Series right here in New York City. Let me get their song, too. I got to get the Street Profits song, too. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. Survivor Series is Sunday. Raw is Monday, all at the Barclays Center. And then they're actually coming back a few weeks after that to Long Island, too, to uh, UBS on Long Island yeah, as well. Yeah, we'll be uh, it's a lot of events in uh, Saturday in Syracuse as well. So, oh, you're uh, yeah, all we'll over all the tri-state area. Yeah, tri-state area for a while. So uh, if the audience doesn't know, um, maybe uh, they're like passive wrestling fans. Let's not okay. assume everybody watching sure. right now is all the way in on both of y'all. But I think for this program... Uh, Black Love is in the building. That's right. That's you right. Are, uh, a couple, but but your relationship is not a. It's not a WWE relationship. It's not as if yeah. there's a storyline in the WWE about y'all being together. This is the real deal. Right. Yeah. Right, right, this right. is real life right here. We're married in real life, but it's not really a storyline on TV. He's he's in a tag team with Angelo Dawkins and Street Profits. But a different kind of Black Love. Yeah. You know, yeah. best friend love, best friend love, love. You know, so romance. Black That's a, a romance. romance. A real yeah. romance. Wait. Romance. Did you guys meet at WWE? Yeah. We met. Oh wow. He was in. He he started in 2015. I started in 2016. Um, and like two months after I got, I started, I was like, ooh, I told my friend, I was like, ooh, keep him away from me. That's a beautiful man. <laughs> and, you know, I went and got what I wanted. So <laughs> and now we're married. So yeah, we met, we met in WWE. Oh wait, so she pushed fade. up. That's she, what who was. pushed up? She I pushed just, up on I, you? Yeah, I just got the fade. That's why I like. Right, I you look like, clean. Like segue, yeah. 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 Straight from the barbershop. So that's what it was. <laughs> but, uh, she definitely, um, she definitely made the first move because when we actually went out, they had a, like a company gathering, and everybody had sushi. I never had sushi in my life. Never okay. loved sushi before I got to the performance or mm. anything. Had a company gathering, went to go get sushi, and the whole night, like, I did notice her like throwing like hints and stuff. But I'm like, you know what? I'm at work. Let me chill. I'm at work. Let me chill. <laughs> yeah. Right play. I had right no play. Chill. Right. I'm the prize. And That's then right. you know, I don't want to you know, take anything for the role, whatever it was. At work. You know, right. No. At work. Yeah. You know, and then. Afterwards, yeah, I remember Golden State was playing, and uh, I was supposed to meet up with Docs and a couple of boys to go watch the game. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm about, I'm about to head out and go watch the game. And she just immediately said, so you just going to watch the game? And I was like, I guess not. I'm going to the <laughs> movies with y'all. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it? No, nah, I went yeah. to the movies, and like she, everybody was sitting down from work from the same row, but like she stopped and sat in like this particular seat. And I was like, dang, man. I don't know if she telling me to sit there or not. So me, being respectful, he wasn't taking at work, was socially distanced before it even happened. Exactly. Yeah, got the seat over. That's right. And then I come to find out later that that she was actually trying to get me to sit beside her. And yeah, I just want to catch. You did it absolutely the yeah, correct yeah, way. And for anybody yeah, at home, yeah. take notes here, gentlemen. Yeah, yeah, and look yeah. how it worked out. Yeah, it worked yeah, out yeah, great. Yeah, and uh, play stupid at work, fellas. <laughs> yeah. Play stupid like at extra, work. like extra, don't don't stupid. don't read Clueless. too much in. Go the opposite way. That's right. I, be nice. Right. Exactly. <laughs> but open the convo. But space. But, but you space. were like, oh, she's clearly not leaving that seat for me. Exactly. It could have been for a friend or somebody. Exactly. Else. You know, what do you remember? What the movie was? It was uh, a scary movie. It was the what was it the. Uh, Gosh, it was the with the one with the possession. The, uh, the right. one with the possession. Oh, I mean, right. you know, it's just a lot of scary <laughs> movies. Con, not, possession, it like, wasn't it, it like wasn't Lord of the Rings. Con, it wasn't the con, no, con, no, con, not like that kind of possession. Like you know, demonic possession. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it God. was it was one of those. And then like she usually doesn't like like horror movies, but that one was so funny to her. So like that was. I was only going because he. Yeah. Was I was about to say you just wanted to. Mm -hmm. Damn, yeah. what was it about? Him, you wanted yeah. to get scared and jump into his lap. Yeah, yeah. but a seat over. Yeah, seat over. So he finally, he finally, I gave up, and he finally. Was like looked at me. He's like, I like your makeup. I was like, what kind of comment? Like, what kind of compliment is that? He's like, I didn't know what else to say. <laughs> I like your makeup. So now, yeah. Back to it work environment. Weird. There were so many other things you wanted to compliment. Yeah. I'm sure. Right. You no, know, and any other anything else, I, I don't know. And so I was like, I like your makeup, and that's the first thing that came to mind. <laughs> she, said, she looked at me like, you like my makeup, and I'm like, yeah. But he said, but he said I always like your makeup. I was like, oh, that means you've been watching me. Okay, now, now I, you know I, you're I, good. I, I, I haven't been, watched. And then I accidentally, <laughs> accidentally gave him the wrong number. Wait, so how? Wait, wait, time out. <laughs> I accidentally gave him the wrong number was yeah. what she said. So the next day, I'm like, why is he not texting me? And then he, he texts me. He's like, why is she not texting me back? So we thought nobody liked each other. And Curved. Then, another episode. Yeah. yeah, we do a segment every day like that. We okay. went kind of all over the place. But now we brought it back together and we got married. So, so how long now. how long from first date to when you got engaged? 
a year. Yeah. Wow. We were engaged together, in a year. We were together a year, engaged for a year, and then we got married. Now, unlike mm-hmm. other couples, because of the work together part, you guys probably got to spend a lot more time together than mm-hmm. a, a regular relationship where they'd have two separate jobs and two different lives and figure out how to find time. You guys, it was every day from the rip. Yes. I'm assuming. Right. Every single day we we work together, we live together, but you know, I always say I'm blessed to do what I love with the person I love, but we are together 24/7, especially be we're both on the same brand on Raw right now. Mm. So we're both booked basically on the same shows, you know, we travel together, we stay in the same hotels, we do appearances together. So but I I mean, I, I like it cuz I, I actually like the person it's that dope. Dope. I'm dope. married to. So it's all good. Now, do you guys do you guys ever find <laughs> Like on a on a show day, for example, right? Like WWE is a lot of hurry up and wait. You know, like all entertainment, you get there very right. early for your call time, and there's sometimes nothing to do. Like you, you're, you know, you might have to talk to a writer or do this, do that. Do you guys have time apart in those situations where you get a little bit of time to go live your own life? You go to the men's locker room, et cetera, or is it literally together all the time? No, no once work happens, is it'll sometimes it'll be days where I won't see her until like. Maybe for her match, cause like they'll have like everything set out, and like if I know her match is coming up, I'll try to get to Gorilla first, and you know make sure everything's good. What's Gorilla? And Gorilla's like the entrance right before you walk out to see y'all. I, I knew the answer. I just always ask. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, 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 that's up a here. great question. No. The Gorilla Monsoon yeah. area. Yeah. That I don't think the audience knows what to Gorilla means. Yeah, yeah. Gorilla is like the main entrance, like right before we walk out to see the live crowd. So. And the last two times somebody said to Gorilla, it was a black man sitting here saying it, and I didn't want the audience to think that they was putting y'all in some sort of Gorilla no, situation. No. Why is a black man got to be a Gorilla? You know what I'm saying? I so you, I wanted to clear that up. You were definitively the only person who thought that. Um, <laughs> but but so you guys might not see each other till the till like till showtime. And also, I will say this. Every time, there have been times when Bianca has matches and Montez is not on the card at all. Mm-hmm. And he's at the building and waiting by the curtain, literally watching through. Like, <laughs> like And you that. told me that you get yeah. more nervous and you're more intense about her matches than your own. 100%. I, I, I mean, uh, obviously because I care, but like it's just I get more nervous because obviously I know how much she has so much passion into this. And like for her to go out there and execute and do well, I know it means a lot to her. So I think that's where like gets the nerves up so high. And obviously, I don't want her to go out there and get hurt or nothing either. So yeah. It's hard because, like, when you're in the ring, you can control what you're doing. Yeah. But when I'm watching him, I can't control it. So I'm watching the screen, like, trying to do the moves with him. And I'm like, let's <laughs> go, go. Like, you know, it, it's, it's so you get more nervous because you can't control mm. what they're doing. So it's just like you're just super nervous when you're watching somebody you love doing what they love. And, you know, they want to do really good at it. So Having a public relationship is very hard. Um. And you guys doing this interview together, has this ever happened before where you guys have done interviews as a couple while yeah. also promoting yeah. WWE? Yeah, we do. Like, we, we they tend to book us a lot together sometimes True. for interviews as, as, a, as a couple. Right. We just don't really do a lot of stuff on TV as a couple. Oh, but so they're cooking up a storyline in the back. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, you never know. Oh, baby. Know. Now, is there, opera. is there anything, like, would you guys... Would you guys enjoy working together on camera? And would you enjoy, are you down for anything that entails? Like I heard a rumor recently, Uh-oh, and it's just a rumor, Uh-oh. not about you guys. It's not about you guys. It's not about Uh-oh. you guys. <laughs> so it actually probably makes it worse because here we go. I heard a rumor recently that the reason that Ray and Dominic, Dominic is Ray Mysterio's son, the reason that Ray and Dominic have not broken up yet. Even when it clearly seemed like that's where they were going, was that they were going to have a breakup, is that Ray doesn't want to have that story with his son. To which I was like, what? Uh, I want I want them to fight. Now, is there anything you guys wouldn't want to do? I mean, you work for a man who has had storylines where he's been against daughter. his daughter. He's been against his son. He's been against his wife. Nothing is off. He was, his wife was in a wheelchair. <laughs> He was talking trash about her while she was incapable of speaking back, silent in a wheelchair. So everything has happened. Is there anything that you guys think you would not want to do? Yes. 
<laughs> <laughs> no, that's the one thing I'm, I'm. The only thing that I would be worried about, like I enjoy doing my own thing, and I think that he shines as well. He's in the tag team, and then maybe down the future he'll shine on his own. We'll, we'll see. But it, it'd be it would be fun to to get in the ring together and do something together. But any like I I I my marriage, man. I, I don't want to play around with that. So it's 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 a little bit of a, a blurry line for me because I, I just see my marriage as something that is sacred. sacred and I don't really want to play around with it in any way that's negative. Like right. if, if, if we're on TV and we're, we're, you know, broadcasting our love, I want to be in a positive light. And so I, I might, you know, I don't know. You might be funny there's a, there's a, there's a Here's an upside, though. Yeah. No. Uh, there, I'm sure there's some frustrations. Y'all are in a relationship. Um under the guise of entertainment, you could get these frustrations off. A nice drop kick, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> a little clothesline. Yeah. Intergender match you know against each other. Yeah. She would definitely win. But by the way, you guys have had... good eye gouge. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now, with the amount you guys have, have messed, like pr practiced together, though, and worked out together, mm -hmm. I'm guessing you guys could probably have a really wonderful match, the two of you. Yeah, yeah, uh, hundred yeah, percent. You guys she, have to know each other in every yeah. way in that regard. She definitely be the powerhouse of the whole <laughs> entire match. I'll be pressing over my could head. Could you press? Could you press? Montez? I could. 100%. Yeah, he she he could. actually wants me to uh, get in a match with him and press him over my head and throw him on somebody. He, that would he, be. He talks about that magic. all the time. He as soon as he walked in, he said she's stronger. Yeah, yeah. She's, she's faster. She's, she's she's a different animal, man. That's, that's why. I can't <laughs> Are you sometimes ears like ears what? She's a different animal. That's why I'm always in my P's and Q's. You know. <laughs> You better, be, you better be at that curtain. Yeah, if I step out of line, I won't be if fine. If you ain't watching me do a match, what you looking at? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I step out of line, I won't feel fine. And in the nighttime, I can't sip the wine. Right, right, right. <laughs> you want to sip wine and feel fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, by the way, Bianca recently, a, a few weeks ago, um, at the pay-per-view in Saudi Arabia, l did a press, you know, which is a two-hand press, where you li generally you lift someone up above your head and then slam them. She, she did it to Sasha, Sasha Banks with one hand. You. <laughs> Which was not something I think I don't know that I've ever seen anyone do no. that before. She held it too. Yeah, has anyone ever Threw done that? A little that? smile in there too when yeah. I was doing it. Uh, I don't think I, I've definitely never seen a, a, a woman do it before. I don't think I've seen Montez. Do you think I've never seen I don't want to say I'm the first. I, I don't, don't want to, you know. No, 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 yeah, that's that risky. True. It's a lot but of wrestlers I, out I there. I think that I'm, I'm like 99.9 percent .9 sure I'm the first female to ever do it. So well, and, and the backstory is you guys were the first. Uh, black women to headline a pay per view. Yes, me, Sasha Banks and I, we were the first black women to ever main event WrestleMania. And uh, I walked out of the SmackDown Miss Champion that match, and we won an SB off of that match. So yeah. that match is going to go down in history. That's uh, so dope. As, you know, monumental. Wait, when did you fall in love with wrestling? Oh, so for me, my journey to, to WWE is a little unique. Like, you know, he he's. Montez has watched wrestling since he was a little kid. I didn't really watch wrestling as a kid. My brother watched it. Um, I, I ran track uh, at, at University of Tennessee. I was a hurdler. I did crossfit. I did powerlifting. I played almost every sport in the book. Uh, but after college, um, I missed like that competitive atmosphere. So I found crossfit, and I would I'm making some all my gear now. And I did the same thing in crossfit. I I would like come out in big old bows and tutus and sequins, while all the other girls were just like in regular workout clothes. And I was grabbing the microphone and talking to the audience. Um, and Mark Henry, who's a Hall of Famer for WWE, mm -hmm. he saw a video of me. And he's like, "Hey, have you ever thought of being a WWE superstar? Because you're doing every." Thing that it takes. You have the charisma, you have the look, you have the personality, the athleticism. So he's the one that kind of opened the door for me and the idea for me. He was like, I can get you a tryout, but I can't get them to hire you, uh, but just go be you. So I, I took did two tryouts, got hired, and then once I got into it, I was like, this is what I've been looking for. Like, mm. this is the perfect fit for me. Like, for me, I describe it as, like, this is my soulmate right here, but I get that same feeling with wrestling. You know, like, I've had all these other jobs before, exes before, but when you find that one, you just know that that's the perfect fit for you. So, like, WWE, is, I feel like it kind of found me, and I didn't realize it was my dream until it was my reality. That's so dope. That's so my do little you go fairy back tale. And, do you go back and study like classic matches now? And yeah, do a lot of I had to play. I had to do a lot of catch up. Uh, just even learning the the culture of WWE, the the business, the history of it. And this one sitting beside me right here, like I said, he's been watching since he was a kid. So he's been there. He would sit me down and he's like, "Watch this match. This is this is the story behind this match." Because you can go and watch all the WrestleManias, but if you don't know the backstories, mm. that's what really makes the the match right. is is the protagonist and antagonist and what's the story here. Uh, he would explain to me the story behind the match and who this person was and what they did and watch this person. This is who you 
should you, you can probably get inspired by this person. Like he was the first one to show me Beth Phoenix picking up two girls. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I want to do that. That's that's I want to beauty and strength. That's what I want to <laughs> represent. So he's helped he helped me a lot along the way. Would Beth Phoenix be a would Beth Phoenix be a dream match for you? That's my dream. Every time somebody asks me what's your dream match, I'm like Beth Phoenix. And it can still happen. Mm-hmm. I wanted yes, I want her to come back and have that one last singles match with me. I mean, if Edge came back, yeah, and Beth's already come back before, yeah, she would come back again. Oh, she could definitely come back right now. She still she works out. She's in shape. She's she's a commentator. She's a commentator. Right now. She's around. But like she, she can come back right now and have a, a, a match. Now so. now you guys so so Montez might have been able to teach you the the his some of the history and the the, the stuff we see on TV. But I'm guessing that you guys were sort of learning the culture at the same time. Mm-hmm. Because, like, frankly, you could probably really never explain to a civilian what the culture of the locker room is. And while it is different than it used to be 30 years ago and it is a much more chill PG business to be in, it is still a whole different way of <laughs> operating. You know what I'm saying? So did you guys sort of go on that crash course together of learning the language and the things that are appropriate to do and how you interact with veterans and it's 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 sort of a wacky world, right? Yeah, it's different because uh, you know, like it's what what these individuals do is is something like you come to learn to like respect it because you start going through it yourself. You know, you on the road sometimes twelve days straight away from family, and you got to travel and you got to get there and perform, and then drive four hours to the next show, and then get a hotel at three four in the morning. So you start getting a whole different level of respect to like what they've been doing for so long to put on all these moments and stuff that they gave us for TV. So, yeah, like, just going through it and, like, experiencing, like, the culture of what they go through, that's when, like, I felt like, you know, you start getting a different, like, type of viewpoint from it. And uh, like you said, the lingo, because, like, even when we, like, talk about certain things, it's in all cuss words. So when people hear us talking about, like, a certain situation, they're like, Arguing, they cussing at each other. Like, no, nah, they just it's sequence, you know. And, but that's just the lingo, and uh, obviously the legends, you know, just you know respecting what they did. It, just like the hip hop culture, it's like you know always like looking at like the the, the individuals who you know paid the way. But wrestling them. actually does a wrestling gives more homage to the legends, you know. Like they, it's known you cannot ever, you could never, never get. If you were being serious, if you were on right. camera performing, you could say whatever you want. But you could never seriously get an interview. Like Montez is going to go on to be, because like Bianca's flowers have already been amassing over the last few years. She's already a world champion. She's already one of the biggest names in the company. Montez is still ascending. But there are many people like myself who think Montez could go on to be like The Rock and Stone Cold Steve oh, Austin. Stop it. This man on the microphone. <laughs> He's got it. I mean, listen, Bianca's better than him at virtually everything. Yes. <laughs> but with that microphone in his I'm hand. I'm okay with number two. That mi- but that microphone in his hand, he is something <laughs> special. Nice something special. Okay. So, but he would never fix his lips to get on an interview and say, like, I am the best who's ever touched a microphone because people would know that Steve Austin and The Rock are still living and breathing and on the internet. They're on Beyonce's internet as well. Also watching and seeing what's going on. Yeah, it's because it's under, a, it's, a, it's a part of a league, it's a part of a network. There's a thing, there's, there's no, a network. Whereas there's no hip-hop, hip-hop network of, you people know, just say loose. hiring and firing. Mm, right. You know what I mean? So people just say shit. They'll say loose things. There's no one for them to answer to the same way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, That's but true. do you ever think about, like, guys like that? Because you have to know deep in your soul that when you're on that mic, the level of confidence and charisma you exude is a very, it's rarefied air, bro. Like, you're you're special with that mic. I appreciate that. But I just, I, I feel like um, with all of us, you know, like, confidence. And, like, in our environment, we got to go. It's live. Like, either something can change, but you have to go. You have to go. And I feel like just having that confidence and being on at any, any given time is a plus. You know, because the fans, I feel like the fans know it too. If like you speaking and you speaking on the mic or you trying to promote your match is happening or whatever else is coming up. If you don't have no intensity inside what you're saying, nobody's going to really believe it. I'm like, ah, he's just saying words. He's just saying this and that. Like what I just did there. But it's just like a simple, like, if you, I feel like if you don't have the confidence or uh, if you're not, if you don't feel what you're saying to the if fans, if you don't believe it, nobody, if else you don't believe it, nobody else will. That's right. And like, no, I feel like the fans aren't dumb. They're, they're nobody's dumb. They know the passion that everyone has. And if you just quote unquote reading from a script, they can tell, you know. So, but I appreciate that, man. Tell me, I'm up there with. I say you will be. Listen, I mean, man. Listen, on, 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 the, will be. on the ascent, you know what I mean. We met. Uh, what, what's our guy, Roman Reigns? Mm-hmm. 
You, know, you go with Roman Reigns. You like Roman? Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And uh, just had actually had my first one of my uh, single matches with Roman on SmackDown. Uh, a few. Oh snap! <laughs> well, it didn't end. It didn't end well. Oh yeah, I mean that's that's you know what that's part, that's part that's, it happens. That's, you know? It happens, you know. It well, happens. After the match in particular, you know, but though, it's a it's a lesson learned, man. I and Wait, he's, what he's yeah. arguably I, chairs, asking chairs and the whole. Oh, he got put through a table. He got put through a table and Ooh. so he got mopped up out here. Yeah, yeah. I got gangrene. He was yo, but up until <laughs> he went to the top rope, he went to hit his splash. It looked like he could win. And then from that moment on, things went a little topsy turvy. I would say. Yeah. When do you think you went to the top rope too soon? You, you know, really, that's probably what it really, was. You hadn't really put the damage all the way in then. No, I didn't. I didn't. You know, I didn't double tap. You know, so I went to the top and then you know, ended up you know catching some knees and got guillotined out. But that's just what happens. That's <laughs> yeah. just what happens. I mean, you know, you went live. For it though. You live to you fight went for it though, my yeah, G. You went for it. I mean, if you don't look, commit. Roman, Roman don't come by here no more. Exactly. He come I'm here. I don't even know him like that. I'm anymore. here today. Where's Roman? Exactly. Survivor exactly. Series is this weekend. Okay. Right, where is? He? It's, it's about we, where you at? Where you at? Where you at? You ain't in here chilling with them with Ebro in the morning. Come on. In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. God. Exactly. In the morning. It's a great point. You got a great point, Ted. Great point. <laughs> I love the way you sold it too. Yo, great guys, uh, Survivor Series and Raw this weekend, the Barclays Center. Thank you guys for coming by. Yo, Bianca, you, you want to tell them about the move we're working on? <laughs> I heard about this. I heard, heard you got about this. I heard, heard you got something so brewing. You want to just you, wait till it happens? You, should we wait till it happens? Wait till it happens. We, we still Y'all making moves still without telling me? I was with Taz, though. You told Taz? He, yeah, he heard about it. Yeah. It's kind of clean. You, you, you going to hear about you it. You guys are now doing business with Ebro and didn't even. No, I ain't no business. I just had a good idea. It's a great idea. You'll hear it. You'll hear it on TV. You'll hear it. All right. You're genius. You already knew that, though. You're a genius, man. You already knew that, though. So I mean, (laughs) I just try to live in his genius, you know, absorb the best (laughs) I can. (laughs) Bianca Montez, thank you, guys. God bless y'all. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it.